Hello everyone, welcome to part one of the Irem Retrospective. Part zero was the prelude to the series, complete with a little bit of extra drumming by request from you guys and gals. But in any case, we're going to start out with Moon Patrol from 1982, which I personally considered a quintessential entry point for Irem in the arcade legacy. And this along with Jungle Hunt, respectively made by Irem and Taito, are two of the absolute best Atari 2600 games, let alone arcade games, but this also has a very, very catchy, memorable tune, which is still stuck in my head this many years later, 1982 all the way to now. And this also has a nice uh, use of uh, Parallax Scrolling, which I covered in my last video. You see the multi-tiered layers here, which gives you a very nice sense of depth and speed and such. Very, very cool stuff here. And I love this uh, going from point A to Z here. Or should we say point A to B? No, but look at the top right, it actually does have me going to point Z on that thing. I love uh, some of the earlier arcade games that actually not only allowed you to get a high score, but allowed you to essentially beat the games. There's a big sense of accomplishment when you can actually beat a game rather than just get a high score and call it a day. And we all know about that uh, Pac-Man when you get to a certain point in the game where you pretty much uh, can only play half the screen if you ever get that far. But there's a nice backstory. We're going to do a little bit of uh, 7 Degrees of Kevin Bacon with uh, Irem today and in the next couple of videos. That little, this, uh, little mixture of Space Invaders as well as uh, point A to B action platformer style gameplay here. Fantastic game and again along with Jungle Hunt, these are two of the quintessential arcade games for me. And I'm going to be covering Taito in my next series along with Data East. Either or as far as the next one I'm going to do. A fantastic game here, and um, we're going to move on to a little bit more backstory after I start out the next level. We'll see uh, what's going on here. And again, I, my mind was completely blown when I did get this in Jungle Hunt for my birthday way, way back in 1983. Because these were so different than your typical Missile Command or Space Invaders or even Pac-Man. These were just truly uh, amazing games that you could actually pretty much beat. And yes, this game gets a lot more difficult when you get later on into it. Very, very cool stuff here. But we're going to move on to a little bit of backstory now, because uh, we know that they're pretty much undisputed in the arcade, along with Data East, Taito, and many other accolade companies and such. But guess what? They were actually a little bit nervous and afraid to delve into the home market. And uh, they kind of enlisted the aid of other companies to do this initially. And uh, it didn't always work out for the best because I'm going to show you the skeleton in their closet right now. They actually enlisted the aid and uh, kind of did a co-production uh, development going on here with uh, one of their early NES games, Deadly Towers. Yes, Irem is a... Uh, Behind Deadly Towers. I hate to say this, but yes, they are. Just look at the title screen and you'll see what I mean here. You gotta take the good, take the bad, and all that good stuff. Trademark, 1986, Irem Corporation. They basically uh, have a subdivision of their company, a subsidiary similar to uh, Ultra Games for Konami and Temtax, and this is pretty much they, them and Lamar are basically the ones who uh, designed this game. That company, uh, didn't do, I mean, this game does have a cult following, I mean, I have tried to beat this game, I've never been able to beat this game, but, uh, you gotta take the good, the bad, and the ugly here, and I'm gonna try to actually beat this game, because now that I know Irem does have something to do with this, but the company that actually worked on this game and co-developed this game actually did, uh, make up for this with some other amazing Nintendo games, which I'll cover as well. But yes, it's hard to believe that the same uh, company that pretty much is behind our type is also behind, uh, indirectly or directly, however you'd like to see it, Deadly Towers. And this is one of those games that you couldn't even give away. But it does have a call following, just like My Little Secret Castle, that you need to just kind of understand how the game works and you can beat it. There is definitely a call following for this game, without a doubt. But it is also considered uh, one of the 20 worst NES games ever made. And there are dungeons here. I've, I've really never even gotten close to beating this game, but maybe it's one of those games where you just have to do a little bit of research and maybe use game facts and learn just a little bit of how to actually accomplish anything in this game. And if any of you have actually beaten this game, I'd love to know your uh, tips as far as maybe your top five tips. They might uh, be great to know coming in, but... Uh, 
they definitely made up with this. That Temptanks company made up for this uh, with one of their follow-up games, which is a nice uh, sleeper hit on the Nintendo. And this one is called, uh, here we go. Did I forget to put it on here? Yes, I did. So I'm going to go into, uh, I'm going to load any other game right now. What is load Cry on Conquest? Because I talked about this in my last video. This would be a little bit of an offshoot right here. This is what I consider the Mega Man ripoff game. It is very, very much like Mega Man. And when I talked about uh, Holy Diver being a very, very difficult game, this game right here is actually harder than Holy Diver. You know why? You'll see. Just look at this unintuitive nature here. Yes, this looks just like Mega Man 2. Oh great, how am I gonna get through here? Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. What am I ever gonna do? Oh no, oh no. Yes, it's kinda unintuitive. You don't know, you actually have weapons you can switch between here. Right there. We could have a, a ball to bounce, I believe. There we go. Okay, I figured that out, but we have one little problem here today. Guess what happens when you die? Just watch. Bam. Guess what? We have two more lives, and when them are done, the entire game's over. Unlike Mega Man and Holy Diver, where you have these Infinity Continues, this game has three lives, and you're done, kaput. But I'm gonna load up that other game right now. For NES, that uh, Temptax also made, the same company that co developed Deadly Towers. And again, this is uh, a sleeper hit, definitely one of the most amazing games. I believe this actually had a poster that came within Nintendo Power way, way back. And yes, I'm one of the people who took all those posters out and put them on my room and such. Uh, we have right here, Metal Storm, another Irem game. And we'll load it with a uh, FCUM. But yes, they definitely made up for this with... Uh, the Deadly Towers debacle with the great, great sleeper hit Metal Storm, complete with the anti-gravity that you typically see in the uh, stages of Strider. The incredibly cool anti-gravity here. Look at that. That is so awesome. But yes, this is another Irem game, which is uh, basically the same developer behind Deadly Towers. So yes, I mean, even as actors having bad movies, you also have uh, <laughs> video game developers having their bad games. It works for everything, I mean. Can you think of a single game company that has a perfect track record? I used to say that Irem did, but now that I know about Deadly Towers, it is an imperfect record, I mean. <laughs> but otherwise, they really do have a great record. But this is a very, very cool game, also very, very difficult. And this is one of those games that I think a lot of people didn't even know about or play until they saw it in the top 20 or top 30 in Nintendo Power's uh, top list each month. And it also helped to have it on the cover, because almost every game that uh, displayed on the cover of Nintendo Power essentially had a chance of becoming a cult sleeper hit. And I am going to be doing more on Nintendo Power, because many of you might be familiar with the fact that way, way back, about 14 years ago, I actually uh, basically uh, started a little project with another person, Philly Man, from another website, ArcadeAtHome.com, and we started with the idea of scanning the ent entirety of the Nintendo Power Collection. And it, we got most of the collection done, about 75% plus of it done, and many of the uh, downloads that you got over the years were actually due to the scans that we did. I did about 70% of the issues, and uh, Philly Man did maybe uh, 8 or 9% of them, then another great friend of mine, uh, Rich Green, did another majority of them, and then we had one other person, for 20 who did some of the other issues. So between us four, we had the vast majority of the issues scanned. And I got a little bit uh, dispirited later on because there were just simply far too many ads within the magazine. I mean, you're talking like 40% threshold as far as magazine ads were concerned compared to the earlier Howard Phillips days where we didn't have uh, quite that same gist. But right now I'm going to load up another fantastic arcade game. We're going to load up uh, Kung Fu Master. And there's a great, great backstory to this game as well. And this is another one of those uh, quintessential arcade hits. And uh, for the home ports, they had pretty much everyone and their mother port it to the home console. And uh, Data East was one of the companies that they usually enlisted because they had a great presence in the home market with games such as Bad Dudes, Robocop, and uh, many other great, great games. Karnov. I mean, they're a fantastic company, as I said. This game right here, you look at the names of the characters. They're Thomas. 
the lead character, and Sylvia. These are also the names of the characters in the Jackie Chan movie, Wheels on Mills. And this game, uh, for the American release, had that kind of, the license removed, so they wouldn't have to worry about uh, that and such. But great, great movie. There's a great, great fight scene at the end of the movie with uh, Benny Urquidez and Jackie Chan that just needs to be seen. Very, very tough game. And this has always been one of my favorite games to play on the ColecoVision as well. And I've always loved these uh, side scrolling brawlers of this nature. And there are many, many games like this, but uh, this is one of the very first to ever do this. And I have to say, even the Atari 2600 version is a fantastic port of this, in my own opinion. But it's not ported by Iron, of course, because as I mentioned, it took them a little while to even become comfortable with coming to the home market. They had other companies such as Day to East and uh, Tamtax and Lamar and such do games initially. And again, remember, if you're running MAME, you can uh, get into the... Uh, I'm going to do this right now. I can uh, enable cheats if I want to. I'm going to enable cheat and uh, do Infinity Energy right here. And then I can also go back and go to History and see the game history on this with the History Age mod. You can do this with all the games on the MAME 2003 course. Right here it has the nice storyline here. The hard work specs the storyline, little trivia, and all that good stuff. Game is known in Japan as Spartan Ice. That is also the name of the movie uh, Wheels on Mills in Japan. It is called Spartan X. Very, very cool stuff there. It even uh, actually said that right there. Look at this. Let me get to the bottom right there. I, pay, I exited it right out of it. This game is based on the movie Wheels on Mill starring Jackie Chan as Thomas and Sammo Hung who also directed. There you go. And the game uh, was initially going to be based off of Je uh, Bruce Lee's uh, Game of Death movie but they changed it into a license for uh, Jackie Chan and Wheels on Mills in the end. You know, aka Spartan X. But I have Infinity Energy right now. And like with Castlevania, with the Infinity Item usage, watch what happens when I beat the first boss here. If you're a Kung Fu fan, you're really going to enjoy which games I showcase next. It'll be a nice, thorough surprise for many of you. And yes, watch that Benny Urquidez uh, battle. You can go on YouTube and watch it. That last five minute battle between Jackie Chan and Benny Urquidez. It is really Jackie Chan and his fierceness. He is so fast. I'm surprised the camera doesn't even uh, glitch trying to capture his insanely fast movements. And here's one of the little uh, drawbacks to having infinity uh, health and such. Come on, dude, get up here. Let me take you out. Now watch what happens here. It clears my remaining health to give me a score right here. But guess what, I have infinity health, so I can pretty much get an infinity score. So I gotta go back into cheats, and uh, enable the cheats, and uh, take off the infinity energy. And there we go. But this is a fantastic game, and uh, they actually had a spiritual successor to this game, which uh, also uh, pretty much has an unnamed uh, Jackie Chan character, but he looks a hell of a lot like Jackie Chan. I'm gonna show you this right now. By the way, some of these games that I'm showing you right now are actually made by the same guy. His name is uh, Takashi Nishiyama, and I'm going to be going a little bit into this right now with him. We're loading up Vigilante. He's behind Moon Patrol. He's behind uh, Kung Fu Master, as well as Vigilante. And several other games that I'm going to be going over. As I mentioned, there's a 7 Degrees of Kevin Bacon, a.k.a. Irem, where uh, Irem is very, very far-reaching from beginning to end, and uh, they pretty much... Uh, one to the accolades of companies such as Sega, Neo Geo, SNK, all that good stuff. I'm going to be covering some of this. But right here, we're pretty much playing as Jackie Chan. This is what I consider Jackie Chan. Most people agree with this. And we have Madonna. And this has to be based off of the actual singer Madonna. I'm using Jackie Chan to rescue Madonna. And this, by the way, is also a fantastic arcade to home port for a TurboGrafx-16. That is really, really where Irem had his best home uh, conversions was on the TurboGrafx-16. And I love these uh, crazy, crazy sound effects there. 
You can do this uh, A to B kicking and such, but there's actually a little tactic I use in this game that make it a little bit easier. I do the jump kicks. These actually go a long way in this game. And of course, I love doing my turbo fire here. So I'm going to hold down the attack button and activate turbo fire for punch and kick. There we go. Okay. And we'll just get past the first boss here. But yes, this is essentially the spiritual successor to Kung Fu. And again, there are probably a good dozen games like this that have this kind of going uh, A to B style uh, brawling like this. And I mean, Ninja Spirit is, uh, should we say Ninja Warriors is another game that I love. And I'm going to be covering that in a future video as well. Not made by Iron, of course, but you'll see what I mean. Can't bump the controller keyboard there. And yes, they all have this type of thing where the enemies can grapple you and drain your energy very fast. I'm kind of wondering if there's a cheat to give me infinity nunchucks in this game. <laughs> okay. I got this. Definitely a quarter uh, trainer here. Probably I want to throw a whole dollar in U.S. money here. I want to be able to keep them nunchucks forever, hopefully. That is one of my favorite weapons in this game. Okay. There we go. That makes the game a lot easier, having the nunchucks. See if I can make it to the end boss with this. Again, if you play the TurboGrafx-16 version of this, it's hard to even tell the difference. They are really pretty spot on. And many of uh, the TurboGrafx-16 games are arcade ports of viral games like R-Type, uh, Legend of Hero Toma, and of course Vigilante, Ninja Spirit. A little uh, trivia tidbit here. Did you know that Bruce Lee didn't want guns in any of his movies? At all. He hates, he hated guns completely. That's why you don't really see guns in any of his movies. I mean, posthumously, I believe they had guns show up in uh, Game of Death, which uh, they finished the movie before, uh, you know, after he died, because he actually didn't even uh, live long enough to complete the movie, so they finished it after, posthumously. Why does this guy look like he's uh, from Harry Potter? Like pre Harry Potter? I love these funny sound effects here. Combination of jump kicks here. Spam the jump kicks. Better than going through four quarters to take them out. But yes, definitely check out the uh, Wheels on Meals uh, Benny Erquidez fight. It's a very, very interesting movie, and uh, it is before Jackie Chan started having them end a uh, movie credit sequence where he did the blooper rules. I mean, I believe Police Story from like 1988 was one of the very first movies to ever have the uh, end blooper rules. And many people didn't even get their first experience with Jackie Chan until Rumble in the Bronx. I mean, I like all the Jackie Chan movies, the good, the bad, and the ugly ones. I, he's a great character, even his more recent movies. <laughs> But yes, this jump kick is a great move to spam in this game because it keeps your enemies at bay. So I'm going to disable the turbo fire right now. And this is a good thing to do before you exit each game. And I'm going to move on to some other stuff. I'm going to load up another uh, Kung Fu game, which is actually a true sequel to Kung Fu Master. But it wasn't released in the United States. This is on the Famicom. And I'm going to load it up right now. Remember Kung Fu Master is also known as Spartan X? Here we have Spartan X 2. And yes, this is the true sequel to Kung Fu Master in Japan, but it was only released on the Famicom, not the Nintendo, but this is a great, great game. Right here, Kung Fu 2. I'm playing the translated version, of course. But we'll get to the first stage or so on this. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to enable Turbo Fire again. And of course, some games like Final Fight, Punisher and so on, some of them Capcom games in particular, and of course Batman Returns on Super Nintendo, or able to do like Turbo Fire at 16 times per second, so you can completely break the AI in them games, but here, it's more of a convenience to have Turbo Fire mode activate. 
But this is actually a great, great game, and I really wish this would have been released in the United States because this is a really, really fun game. Right up there with games like Bad Dudes. And of course, uh, Day of the East was behind Bad Dudes. And I love that they do drop health here. Very, very nice. And uh, like I showed you in my Neo Geo CD video recently with the custom OSTs, I'm going to be showing you some nifty, nifty custom OSTs for Irem as well. You'll see these in uh, part two. But for today, we're going to be doing Kung Fu Master. Boss battle. And uh, look at this. This is uh, actually just one of those things where you have to learn the patterns. Oh no, I could jump at it, but I'm not going to get in there. This music here, this boss battle music, sounds like it's from another game that I played before. Spoiler! <laughs> and you can actually do this uh, tactic with a certain character in Mortal Kombat to spam the game as well. But yes, that's all it takes, just doing a sweep kick there. But yes, uh, Spartan X2, aka Kung Fu Master 2, great, great game. And there actually was a prototype of uh, Super Kung Fu Master 2. Uh, that may or may not work on the arcade course. I'm gonna have to check into this, but it was never released, but the prototype, uh, showed up a few years ago, and I'd definitely like to check that one out. But definitely a fun game here. And I'm gonna show you something else interesting here. Let me, uh, disable this turbo fire again. You may find this quite interesting, but the same guy who did Moon Patrol, Kung Fu Master, Vigilante, and such, he moved on to the company Capcom, and uh, he made games for Capcom as well. And one of the games he made, and when you start seeing this game in action, it really, really feels like uh, another version of Vigilante, which uh, is very, very interesting here. It's the same guy, Takashi Nishiyama here. And I'm going to load this game up here just to give you an example, called Trojan. Yes, when you see a uh, developer go from one company to another, you can definitely see the... Uh, the roots, the deep-rooted uh, awesomeness of their development techniques and such. Right here, it really does feel like, uh, essentially, a game made by the same guy who did uh, Vigilante and Kung Fu Master. And again, Takashi uh, Nishiyami did so many great things that many of you might not even be aware of. And wait to see the next thing that I showcase that he's uh, responsible for. But yes, this feels like uh, I'm playing more like a medieval version, a futurist, uh, futuristic, alternate timeline, medieval version of uh, Kung Fu Master. And I love the uh, Nintendo ha home port of this as well. Great, great game. And I got my butt kicked there. But yes, this guy worked for uh, SNK as well as Capcom. And he's behind a lot of awesome stuff at Capcom. He actually made uh, Section Z as well as Legendary Wings, and of course Trojan. And I should use my shield here more often. But he's also responsible for one other other big thing here. Something that is uh, known in our, should we say our Urban Dictionary catalog. Let's talk about the Hadouken. He's responsible for Hadouken. Yes, I'm talking about the Hadouken from Street Fighter 1. He is uh, directly responsible for this technique. One of the first projectile attacks in any one-on-one -on -one fighting game. I'm going to load it up right now. And this is actually uh, loosely based off of a concept that he saw in an old 1970s anime called uh, Space Battleship Yamato. And uh, he kind of downsized it, downscaled it to a, a personable level with uh, characters such as Ken and Ryu. You know, the Hadouken. This game actually had a nice custom OST on TurboGrafx CD as well, which many of you might not be even aware of. And uh, he kind of moved on to other stuff, such as working for SNK after he did this game here. He worked on Street Fighter, doing a Hadouken and all that good stuff. Let's see if we can get a Hadouken in here. This is very, very fast paced considering. Now you get a kick out of the comment he says when he beats you in this game. Your opponent, just watch. I need to do a Hadouken here. Oh, you know what? I think I still have Turbo Fire Mode activated here. Let's make sure I don't have it enabled. There we go, Hadouken! 
He wasn't around for Street Fighter 2, but you can definitely see that he had a big impact on the series. And by the way, after he left uh, this, he actually started working for SNK and doing uh, games such as Art of Fighting and Fatal Fury, which he kind of co-created, along with another great individual. He also worked on King of Fighters and Samurai Showdown games. But uh, there's another Street Fighter that is also on the TurboGrafx CD, for those of you who want to get a custom OSD going on here. And I'm going to load it up for a quick moment because this is unintuitive as a name here. It is uh, actually called Fighting Street, but it is actually the Street Fighter arcade game under a different name. Kind of like Spartan X being Kung Fu Master. But yes, uh, the same guy who did Kung Fu Master, Moon Patrol, uh, Art of Fighting, Fatal Fury, and all that good stuff, also created Hanukkah for Street Fighter. And he also did many, many more things. He actually helped go on and work for the Metal Slug series, as well as uh, other stuff. He also created the arcade board for the Neo Geo system. So pretty fantastic stuff here. Again, 7 Degrees of Kevin Bacon, a.k.a. Iron here. But hopefully you see a few games that you can check out from what I showed you today. But great, great custom OST going on here. Really, really digging this custom OST here. That's one thing that definitely improved in uh, Street Fighter 2 is the uh, movement is much more fluid than it is in the original Street Fighter. But yes, it is definitely uh, one of the quintessential first games to have one-on-one uh, -on -one combat, such as Jair Kung Fu, and of course Karate Champ. But great, great game, and I just got my butt completely kicked there. But we're going to be moving on to some R-type stuff in part two. But uh, since I'm going into this little gist, uh, je sais quoi, of all the games that are very, very similar to this in nature, another game that I'm a big, big fan of, and I find this kind of funny because the Japanese version of this is called Kung Fu, whereas the American version of this is called China Warrior, but it pretty much plays like Kung Fu Master again. And when uh, this was actually uh, out on the TurboGrafx-16, this game actually blew my mind because the graphics took up nearly the entire screen. Again, this is not made by Irem. This is just a game that is very, very similar to Kung Fu Master in nature. And this is one of the games that I got when I got my TurboGrafx, uh, should we say Turbo Duo many years ago at Video Game Exchange. And this game has always been a main uh, namesake in my collection. And I love the music here. I really, really thoroughly wish the TurboGrafx-16 would have done much better as a system because it is actually a great system, but again, a vast majority of the games were not really Americanized. They were more Westernized, so... These were not games like uh, you would typically see in America, like Contra, Super Mario Bros., and all that. These are games that many people never even heard of, such as China Warrior, Newtopia, and so on. A great, great game, and of course, uh, Fist of the North Star, you know, Last, aka Last Battle, or other games that follow this vein, Black Belt on Second Master System, and so on. But uh, we're gonna do one last thing for this video. We're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna do very, very briefly. We're gonna do Vigilante for the Turbo Graphics 16 to show you a comparison from the arcade version to the home version. And then part two, we're gonna move on to more R-type awesomeness, complete with some of the custom OSTs for Irem. But here we're gonna see a drug comparison from Vigilante Arcade to the home conversion on TurboGrafx-16, which I consider an amazing, amazing, almost perfect port. And of course, all the companies also had the same, uh, kind of just a quad, like, uh, Namco had their arcade version of Spider-House being a great, great arcade to home port as well. Along with some title games. Even Operation Wolf had a Japanese uh, arcade to home version here. And this really looks amazing. I mean, this absolutely blows away anything you would typically see on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a true and tried arcade to home port. Awesome stuff here. Notice the one thing that did change is the sound effects aren't really as uh, blatantly ridiculous. But otherwise, the game is pretty spot on to the arcade version. Complete with the jump kicks. Oh yeah, I just thought of one other thing. There's one other game that I'm going to have to showcase for the end of this video here. But you can see this is pretty spot on to the arcade version. And one thing that I highly recommend is uh, sometimes when you play a game, and then you realize the game is also on another system such as the Game Boy, the monochrome Game Boy, 
don't always expect it to be the same game, because we play Kung Fu Master, and it is uh, pretty much the same game as the arcade version, just downsized and kind of diluted a bit on the Atari 2600, including Good Vision, Atari 7800, and so on, but on the Game Boy, it is actually a completely different game, and more along the lines of, of course, the uh, Vigilante-style game. I'll show you right now. I'm going to go to Game Boy. It's our final game in this video. And I just passed right by it. Kung Fu Master for the Game Boy. And it very much plays like uh, Vigilante. We're going to start the game real quick. And this is actually a great, great gem of a game for the Game Boy. I always thought it was the same game as the arcade version, but it is a completely different game. And we're going to do a little bit of a bonus thing here. Again, I'm running this through the Gambetta Core, which is the best thing for Game Boy and Game Boy Colors. I'm going to go into Options here. I'm going to go to uh, Game Boy Colorization and change it to Super Game Boy. Internal Pilot, change it to Super Game Boy. And look at that awesomeness. That is amazing. We'll get to the first stage. But yeah, it feels like I'm playing Vigilante crossed over with Kung Fu Master. But again, they are of the first... Of the same lineage, of you know, and I get a kick out of the first end boss here. Actually, a really, really fun game. And this is uh, Irem finally making it to the home market, wherein they didn't really do stuff like uh, Deadly Towers, and uh, they had, of course, Davies help out on games like Kid Nicky and such. This is where they actually did make a game on the Game Boy. Monochrome. But here we're playing with a Super Game Boy Palette. Let's take this dude out before the end of this video here. You think a chainsaw would take me out one hit, but nope, I can get taken out in many hits there. And look, it even looks like Jason Voorhees there. Let's see if I can take him out before the end of this video. I'm on, uh, the time uh, limit here. When all else fails, do the jump kick. Oh, great. There we go. We're at the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed part one, guys and gals. Part two coming up with some R-Type custom OST ponage.